On the show today, we give you a never-before-seen view of one of the most popular sporting events on Liberty's campus. Then we look back on the career of Russian-born Elena Kisileva and her historic playing days at Liberty University. It's all ahead. Game On starts right now. Welcome into another edition of Game On. We hope you're having a great week, and we hope that we're about to make it just a little bit better. As always, alongside Rhett McGibbon, I'm Matt Warner. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff to get to today, but first we begin with some hoops. The Liberty men's basketball team took on Princeton this past Saturday, and in typical Flames fashion, it would go down to the wire. Yeah, it would. Never lacking for drama this season. The Flames would make it awfully interesting for the preseason Ivy League favorite. But first, they'd have to dig themselves out of an early hole. Liberty looking to win its first ever game against against the Tigers. But in the first half, Princeton card Aaron Young doing his best to make sure that wouldn't happen. This guy averaged one half of a point per game coming into this, and then he goes off for five threes in the first half. Talk about exploding. He put the Tigers up by nine at the break. Second half now, the Flames will begin to surge. Mayo Baxter Bell adding a spark with six second half points. Then freshman Brock Gardner throwing down a couple of hammers. That one off the back door cut. And finally, Georgie Pacheco drilling the clutch three ball with 1.41 to go. That got Liberty within a single point. But unfortunately, that's as close as they would get in this when Princeton, a veteran club, made all the plays down the stretch to preserve a 67-64 win. Another heartbreaker for the Flames. That marks the second straight three-point loss for LU. The game itself, not the only loss for the Flames, however, in this one. In this contest, sophomore forward Caleb Holmesley suffered a season-ending knee injury. Now, out of respect for him, we won't show you the play in which the injury happened, but Holmesley entered that game leading the Flames in points, rebounds, assists, and blocks. So obviously, this comes as a huge blow for Richie McKay and his squad. My heart breaks for him. That yeah. kid is special, and yeah. he's been through a lot. And um, just got to trust in God's sovereign plan because he won't play a, a game for us this season. Obviously, we'll have to figure out what to do without a player like Caleb. I mean, he's 21 minutes a game in the game. He's got 14 and 8 and 4 assists. He's a huge dimension to what we do offensively. So, but we'll figure it out. And uh, and again, it's it's a privilege to coach this group. So uh, I, I trust that we'll find a way to be competitive. Well, turning our attention to women's basketball, with 11 underclassmen on the roster, a tough start to the season was expected. However, the ladies were coming into this game hoping to turn the ship around as they took on West Liberty. The Hilltoppers would enter the match with a record of 1-7, so this would be a battle of two teams hoping to find their groove. Big South Freshman of the Week, Kean Green, would have another huge game, scoring a career-high 20 points and pulling down 14 rebounds. Green would actually score 10 of her points in the third quarter when the Flames would go on a 21-2 run that would blow things wide open in favor of the Flames. It was a solid day all around for the Lady Flames. 13 players would get on the board, and 10 players would combine for a season-best 18 assists. One stat that is crucial for the Flames moving forward is rebounding. For the fifth straight game, the Flames won the rebound battle and actually pulled down 23 offensive rebounds in the process. Those rebounds would turn into second chance points and pro would propel the Flames to a 64-38 victory over West Liberty. Time now to introduce you to our newest segment here at Game On. We call it Flames Fill in the Blank. Here's how it works. Our friend Ellie McKay will sit down with different Flames athletes and ask them some fun, fast-paced fill in the blank questions so that we can get to know them a little bit better. With our first athlete, here's Ellie. Hey guys, this week on Flames Fill in the Blank, we're sitting down with Liberty women's basketball player, Stephanie Patton. I grilled her pretty hard after some pretty tough questions. Let's check it out and see what she had to say. So thanks for joining us today, Steph. We're gonna ask you some questions to fill in the blank. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, let's start with food. Everyone loves food. What's the best pregame meal? Mm, probably Chipotle. I love whenever we get Chipotle catered. Your favorite pro sports team? Probably Golden State. Okay. I love Steph Curry, so. The best part of my game is? Probably shooting. I'm a three-point shooter, so definitely like scoring in that. Stephanie Patton with the three. So let's talk a little bit about your teammates. Okay. If they had one word to describe you, what would it be? Probably goofy. They always tell me I'm super goofy, so <laughs> I'd say that for sure. The funniest teammate? Mm, I'd say Nini. Nini always makes me laugh. Like, no matter what mood I'm in, she can always make me laugh. All right, let's move on to talk a little bit more about you. Let's get personal. <laughs> Your biggest pet peeve? 
noises, like when people are chewing, I hate that. I hate like the sound of people chewing, it's so gross. It's <laughs> disgusting. <Yeah. laughs> Your most valuable possession? I have a pearl necklace for my mom, so I'd say that's one of my valued possessions because it was something that was important to her, so I really like it too. Your biggest celebrity crush? Oh, uh, I would say Liam Hemsworth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he's so cute. So. The best Woof. If you're an Uber driver, who would you want to pick up? Maybe Zac Efron. <laughs> okay, where would you take him? Um, somewhere to eat, somewhere that he likes, so that we can just hang out and talk and have fun. Just hang, with Zac Efron. Love that. You do a really good impression of? I'd say Coach Green. We've all pretty much nailed the Coach Green impression. Yeah. Oh, you better get up, get up, somebody's open. Backside rebound! You want to try it on camera? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know, I better not. I okay. Better not. okay. <laughs> good choice. Keep it safe. Your favorite form of social media is? Instagram. I love Instagram. <laughs> I'm super big into like taking pictures and stuff, so that's just something that I like awesome. to do. Awesome. We'd love to keep up with you more there, so you want to say your handle? Yes, Steffi P5. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> All right, Steph, so thanks so much for joining us today. Thank We're you so for happy to have you. Me. Yeah, that was a good time. Look for much more of those segments coming in the future. Well, this past week, Liberty softball coach Dot Richardson released her team's upcoming schedule, and it's chock full of high-profile matchups. In all, the Lady Flames will face seven teams that made the NCAA tournament last season and two squads in UCLA and Auburn that reached the Women's College World Series. Here are some of the most notable opponents. We already mentioned UCLA and Auburn, but Liberty will also face Tennessee and Florida out of the SEC. And then you take a look at some of those in-state home games, Virginia and Virginia Tech coming to town in all a challenge challenging schedule as Dow Richardson continues to work on building this program into a contender. The Liberty Flames Club Sports Program held their annual Hall of Fame banquet this past weekend. Entering into the hall would be three individuals who were building blocks to their respective programs. Kevin Mangweeb was an athlete for the ski and snowboard team. However, he made his largest impact as a coach. He would start the mantra, light on the hill, as he encouraged his athletes to make a difference for Christ in the ski and snowboard community. Patty Smith was the first ever recruit for the Lady Flames D1 hockey program. She would enable a team that lacked in depth and talent to build slowly but surely. She meant mentioned in her speech that her time at Liberty and experience built her character. Lastly, D1 men's coach Corrado Puglisi entered as a builder. He led the Flames to an ACC title and recruited current Flames head coach Kirk Handy to the program. For more on Corrado, check out our feature story about the ACC championship on our website. Well, it sounds like a broken record, but the Flames hockey team is a young group, much like our basketball teams here at Liberty. They were hoping to end their first semester schedule on a high note. Flames taking on the IUP Crimson Hawks. The Friday night game would be a popular contest as always. It was the midnight game. We'll have more on that in just a bit. The Flames would trail early, but then freshman Quinn Ryan would show off the silky mitts and finish off a gorgeous individual effort. That go goal would propel the Flames to an offense of outburst, scoring four more goals and winning 5-2. Saturday's game would be a different tale. IUP goaltender Robbie Stock would put on a clinic, stopping 65 of 66 shots. He pushed the game to overtime with a desperation save on the Flames. Colt Steele with only seconds remaining. In overtime, the Flames would finally break through. Zane Sharks would find a loose puck at the side of the goal and make no mistake, giving the Flames a 1-0 win as they sweep IUP. Well, you heard Rhett mention Liberty Hockey's midnight game a moment ago, but in reality, calling it just a game, it's not really doing it justice. This thing is an event, and it brings out the masses. It also happened to bring out our cameras this year, as we now bring you a taste of what the midnight game is all about. Hey there, you late-night hockey lovers. Welcome to the Lahey Ice Center. It's like a little bit smaller town and at night, especially around campus at Liberty with curfew and everything, anytime around midnight, like you drive around and it's just like a dead zone. But when there's a hockey game at midnight, it's just, you come around the rink and it's just alive. Yeah! Students are wound up at, at warm up at 11.30 at night, I mean, it's packed out at 11 30. Uh, it is, yes it is a uh, it is at prime time it is a uh, great opportunity to play in front of a lot of people it is a great environment to be a part of and that's all part of being here as a student at Liberty is to be involved with these environments and, and to really thrive in them. Control first 20 first 10 minutes is critical right we talk about dumping the puck getting the pucks in deep lay in the body Pucks on net, right boys? Lots of back pressure on the forwards, makes these job easy, right? Let's go get them, boys. Roberts, 
Thompson, Zach Hayes starting off with the Flames. Faceoff's gonna be won back by the Hawks, but Cambridge playing it ahead. There's two good. He'll let a snap for Cody scores! Harder with confidence, all right? Harder with confidence, turn into the place, get the puck, and let's get the traffic on this goalie, all right? Hey, boys, two, two guys hard, boys. two guys hard, right? One guy high, all right, let's go. Looks like a good time had by all. Well, coming up from Russia to Virginia, we bring you the story of one of the greatest Liberty women's basketball players of all time. Plus, I bring you yet another entertaining edition of Warm Hot and Fuego. That's when Game On returns. For more than four decades, Liberty University has been redefining success by molding leaders who believe in living out their calling with integrity. We don't just focus on how something is done, but why it should be done. As an accredited liberal arts institution, Liberty offers a broad range of opportunities, balancing academic theory, research, and hands-on training. Liberty's classroom extends well beyond the borders of our campus to a global community of online students who have access to the same quality education as our on-campus students. Excellence at Liberty also plays out on the field through 20 NCAA Division I teams and 35 club sports teams our faith inspires us to understand the world around us. Liberty graduates leave here prepared for more than a career. They leave prepared for life. Be more at Liberty University. Anyone who may be doubting being able to go back to school or doing online and having time, I would say LU Online is the best way to go. I'm 31, this was my fourth degree, you can get it done. I changed jobs in the middle of it. It's possible, especially if you do have to work, because so many of us today, we don't have the means to not work and go to school. And I feel like LU Online allows time and the flexibility to do what you need to do in life and in work while getting your degree. At Liberty University, our belief in training champions for Christ isn't restricted to our campus in Virginia. In fact, our online programs allow students around the world to access the same quality education as if they studied on our residential campus. After all, we firmly believe that students should be able to fit study time around family, work, or military responsibilities. The path to freedom begins at Liberty.
pleased that an optimistic today. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Game On. Elena Kisilevo is raised to do one thing, play basketball. And while she was a dominant athlete growing up, she would not truly enjoy the game until she reached Liberty University. It would be here that she would find a renewed confidence in herself and also give the basketball program a spark it was looking for. On March 14, 1998, Liberty basketball star Elena Kisileva Bangs led the Lady Flames to the biggest game in program history to date. Liberty faced the nation's top-ranked team, Tennessee, coached by legend Pat Summit, in the first round of the NCAA tournament. The matchup marked a first in tournament history. It's a, a matchup that will bring national attention. There's been a lot of attention on, on both programs and the fact that both teams are undefeated. Uh, what better way uh, to, to start the tournament than to you know, have two undefeated teams? So the excitement level, we are going to go play against the best of the best, was there. Finding out that we're playing against uh, Lady Volunteers and against Pat Summit's team, um, mixed emotion. It was exci exciting because even then, I had so much respect and appreciation for what uh, awesome. Pat has done. And, then, and on the other side, yeah, we are going to play against one of the best teams, if not the best team. And that year we've learned they were the best team. They went undefeated the entire, uh, the entire year. Born in Moscow, Russia, the future Big South Hall of Famer remembers how it all got started. Back in those days in Russia, it was the whole idea that um, the Russian Olympic Committee, who organizes those basketball academies, would spot you, single you out among all the other peers, and invite you to go to the basketball academy where your practice is everyday class. Third grade, that's when we trained at the local level. Uh, sixth grade, that's when I transferred to the basketball academy where I have to over an hour commute from the suburbs of Moscow towards downtown where the school was. Uh, by the time I was in eighth grade, I would probably spend more time away from home than at home with my family. Uh, it was hard for a kid, for a teenager to have a full-time job was not fun. But it was commitment to the country, it was commitment to the game of basketball, it was being thankful uh, that somebody selected you and found you good to be good enough. Once her schooling was complete, Elena had a choice to make if she wanted to pursue higher education. In Russia, there was no such thing as college basketball. So if you play ball on the club team, you either have to externally get your college degree or not to get any degree at all. In 95, uh, Liberty grad Julius Mwosu came to play on the men's team for the same club that I played on. And he is the one that introduced me to Coach Reeves and to Liberty University. Those were the, the fun days of playing basketball. I finally had fun. The teammates were near my age, uh, so I could relate to them, uh, even off the basketball court. Winning is always fun. <laughs> and having a, uh, a lot of playing time on the court is always fun, too. And as a result of that fun, Elena and the Flames won the Big South title for the first time in school history, much to the delight of the student body. The Vine Center was packed. I guess it's been from almost last place, if not last place, year before, to the championship game in the Big South. I just remember so many students over there in Vine Center getting excited, cheering us on, give us that a little bit of extra faith that, yes, if we push a little bit more, we can do that. Success often breeds further success. Now with a newfound belief in her game, Elena discovered the fervor she was looking for. By the end of the first season, I finally felt confident that yes, I'm at the right place. A lot of times when you, in the moment, it's hard to see the reason is why God placed you in this place at that time. When you go through tough times, the tribulations, you always ask, why? <laughs> Why? What am I doing here? Why do you have me here? Now it's easy to look back and see that whole path and the whole process. Why did I have to have such a hard time in Russia training and not really having fun, but working hard and going through this? It's because that was a preparation. That was a, uh, the perseverance that I needed to learn to come here and then having fun playing basketball here in America was, I feel like, a reward, like a blessing. 
The success of the Lady Flames basketball program continues to this day, following in the footsteps of the Hall of Fame woman from Moscow. While their playing days are over, the game of basketball remains a part of Elena's life as an assistant coach of her son's AAU team. Elena is passing along the joy and passion she learned at Liberty University to the next generation. It's a beautiful communication. Elena was part of the inaugural class of the Liberty Athletics Hall of Fame, and as you just saw, a well-deserved honor. Well, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before Rhett is also inducted for his work on this next <laughs> segment, Warm, Hot, and Fuego. We're named the top three athletic performances of the week in Liberty Athletics. Rhett, next yes. week, yes. next week, we light them up. That's right. Not to steal a line from Alan no. York, but you throw on the Christmas <laughs> lights and we celebrate uh, yes. with a special warm hot for you. We look forward to that. But in the meantime, this week, let's go ahead and begin with Warm. Warm, Quinn Ryan, men's hockey. This guy's just like a smooth glass of eggnog, my friends. Look at this goal. Who doesn't just love so eggnog? smooth. Woo -hoo -hoo. I love I love eggnog. I, I mean you. We, we you know, this. bringing out the jug next week on the show. But this guy's the future number one center on this team. You know, when once Grant Garvin graduates, this guy yeah. should fill in that role. So skilled. But another thing I like about him, you see it right here on the screen. Not worried about going to the dirty areas. He's yeah. not worried about getting hit, taking a hit. He just plays a complete hockey game. Defensively sound, great vision. That pass you just saw right there. The Zane Sharts, a beautiful feed. This guy can really do it all for the Flames. And he's only a freshman. Excited to see where he's going to end up. Yeah, speaking of youngsters, we stick with that theme as we go from warm to hot. Hot. Georgie Pacheco. Yeah. This guy is just like a nice Christmas pastelli. And for those of you who don't know what that is, yeah, it's a is Puerto it? Rican meat pastry that's popular around Christmas time. I had no idea. But yeah. I bet mean, he's familiar. You're being from Puerto Rico. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you I kind of want to try one of these of the things. World, Rhett. I, you know, Wikipedia does amazing <laughs> things. We're seeing a future stud bloom yeah. right before our eyes. This guy right there, a huge play late in the game, driving to the basket. He was coming up with some massive threes as yeah. well. It's just, you don't think about a freshman having the wherewithal and possibly the confidence to do that, but this kid right now is just, he's trending upwards. He's just doing such a great job for this group, and it's going to be even more important with, you know, unfortunately, Caleb Holmesley going down. So he's just a, a young guy that's going to have to step up, and he's being thrown right into the fire, but it, he, in my opinion, seems like one of those guys that's going to have no problem yeah. handling that extra pressure. Already leading this team in minutes as yeah. a true freshman, so that tells you what Richie McKay thinks about the young man. For sure. And finally... In Fuego, who you got? Kian Green. She is just like yeah. Christmas pudding. What is it? Always mean? full of surprises. What, what you know that that Christmas pudding, no. that little no, breaded like, pudding around Christmas just time. Was uh, I'm sorry, that has like the warm sauce no. on it. It has like quarters and stuff in it. Anyway, yeah. she's been absolutely amazing. You know, just last week I said. I was going to say, wasn't she on this? I, she was. Segment? She wow. was, I think, warmer. Back to back weeks. I know, she's impressed. Seriously, wow. she's just been that good. Pulling 20 points, 14 yeah, boards. I talked about it earlier. Just going to the rim with authority, grabbing rebounds. Like, she's just exactly what Coach Green needs right now. And, you know, we talked about it. Some of these freshmen are going to kind of find their way eventually, and yeah. she's starting to find her way right now just before conference time. Kian, can you make it three weeks in a row on Warm Hot and Fuego? That's the challenge. I guess that we'll is. find out Hat next trick. week. Rhett, yeah. thanks as always. Still to come on this edition of Game On, we're giving something away and we'd like to give it away to you. Find out what I'm talking about after these important commercials. Josiah Barty. Here. William Byron. Is William here? Hi, I'm William Byron, driver of the number nine Liberty University truck for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Racing in the Camping World Truck Series doesn't leave a lot of extra time in my schedule, but I didn't want to put the brakes on my education. That's why, when I'm not on Liberty's campus, I continue my studies through their online program. While in the shop with Kyle and the team, I'm able to maintain a busy race schedule and continue pursuing my degree. Keep your education on track. Check out Liberty University online and on campus. What gets you out of bed in the morning? Is it just a routine? Or is it something greater? Somewhere inside each of us is a calling. It's the difference between a job and a career. Between the ordinary and the extraordinary. 
between just living in the world and making it a better place. It can't be bought. It can't be borrowed. It can't be given to you. Your calling is unlike any other, and it has to be discovered. Liberty University, right now. Discover your calling at liberty.edu. We'd like you to meet a few people. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Debbie. Matthew and Mark enjoy some of the best on-campus housing options and the number one ranked dining hall in the country. Luke eats on the go. And Debbie has a really comfy couch and makes some of the best lasagna you've ever tasted. Matthew and Mark love watching their team compete at the Division I level. Luke gets a lot of exercise, while Debbie works out her green thumb. Matthew and Mark are educated by some of the country's best professors. Luke and Debbie attend one of the highest ranked, most affordable universities of its kind. And whether at their kitchen table or in another country, they're educated by the same great professors as Matthew and Mark at Liberty University. With over 500 online and on-campus programs of study, there's no one way to be a student. So what are you waiting for? Connect today at liberty.edu. Liberty University, right now. Welcome back to the show. Well, you are running out of time. We're over halfway through the month of December, and your chance of winning a beautiful Liberty Helmet like this one comes to an end when we turn the calendar over to January. In case you've forgotten, let me refresh your memory on how you can win this beautiful helmet. For the entire month of December, every time that you share one of our stories from our game on Facebook page, you'll be entered to win this full-size replica Liberty football helmet. Yes. The more you share, the better chance you have to win. That's right, so go to Facebook.com slash GameOnLU, press that share button on any and all of our stories, and you could win a beautiful Liberty helmet. It really couldn't be any easier. You're simply a mouse click away from owning this. I know, how you, easy is that? I know, if you can't see it on camera, it's got these beautiful red flecks. It's a quite gorgeous helmet. Gorgeous. It is. It yeah, really is. take his word for it. Hey, we're about out of time for today. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Hit us up on social media. Click that share button. Also, our website, gameonlu.com. We'd love for you to check that out as well. He's Rhett McGibbon. I'm Matt Warner. We appreciate you checking out the show. We plan on seeing you right back here next time.